This video will help deconstruct and support student proficiency with MGSE 1 MBT 4. Take a minute to read the entire standard. What do you notice? First, this standard is primarily about adding, not subtracting, within 100. First graders are not expected to compute differences of two-digit numbers other than multiples of 10, like 70 and 30. Second, there are some examples listed in the first bullet point. It is critically important to realize that these examples are not exhaustive. See page 14 of the grade level overview for clarification. But the short of it is this. Students should work with any two add-ins at some to 100 or less. We should not forget about two digit plus one digit, like 24 plus nine, nor should we leave out two digit plus two digit expressions where one of the add-ins is a multiple of 10, like 27 plus 40. This statement does not exclude expressions like 37 plus 23 and 59 plus 35, where if using a place value strategy like decomposition of tens and ones, which would require regrouping 10 ones as 110. Finally, the standard calls for students to use concrete models and drawings based on place value strategies. Students should not be exposed to the standard algorithm of carrying a digit in first grade as this is a fourth grade expectation. Another frequently asked question by first grade teachers is about the orientation in which addition problems should be written, horizontally or vertically? The answer is both, but emphasis should clearly be placed on horizontal orientation because when problems are always expressed vertically, students become conditioned to ignore place value. Let's take a look at the vertical progression. There are five kindergarten standards that help students develop fluency with addition and subtraction within 10. For the purposes of this video, we are going to focus on the vertical progression of place value understanding since 1 NBT4 states that students should be able to use knowledge of place value to add within 100. In kindergarten, students decompose teen numbers as a group of 10 and some more ones. Before diving into 1 MBT4, Students need to spend considerable time becoming comfortable with the abstract meaning of base 10 notation for two-digit numbers. That is that a number like 13 is composed of one 10 and three ones. And a number like 30 is composed of three tens and zero ones. The latter is really important, especially in cases where students work two numbers that sum to a multiple of 10. Like 57 plus 3, for example, which is 5 tens and one more 10. It might seem natural for first graders to write 6 tens as simply a single 6, but they need to learn the convention of using a 0 as a placeholder to represent 6 tens and 0 ones, which goes back to standard 1 MBT2. This is another reason why it is important to include problems that sum up to a multiple of 10 for the standard. The big idea for this NBT domain in grade one is that 10 ones, like the base 10 blocks pictured here, can be grouped together into a bundle of 10 ones, which is equivalent to 110. GreatTangMath.com has a great game called Funny Numbers in which students can practice addition. Let's go ahead and play the game. Here we have students adding 7 ones and 5 ones, which gives us a sum of 12. Then for our tens, we have five tens plus two tens, which gives us a sum of seven tens. Seven tens and 12 ones is the same as eight tens and two ones, or 82. Students are not expected to carry the one to the tens place, but rather reason that seven tens and 12 ones is the same as 82. Arrow arithmetic puzzles are great for helping students to internalize the structure of a 100 chart, which will help them add two-digit numbers flexibly. Watch how this student interprets the meaning of this clue card. All right, how did you know that was 59? Okay. Notice that this student was able to visually navigate down 10 and over 1 to get to 59. Some students may need to use their finger to trace the trajectory, and that's okay. But eventually, with lots of practice, we want students to do this without using fingers. Now a critical follow-up step is to ask the students to interpret the mathematical meaning of the arrow clues by writing an equation. 
This is considerably more difficult than simply determining the path of the arrows. Pay attention to what happens next. All right, can I ask you a question? If this was a math equation with numbers only, this would say 48 plus blank equals 59. So what would the blank be? 48 plus what? That's 59. What does down mean? Take, add. Add, well, how much? When you go down on the hundreds chart, you add one. Okay, and then when you go to the right, what does that mean? Add one. Just add one. Add one more? So is it 48 plus one plus one? What's 48 plus one plus one? So this student has a misconception. In a case like this, it is really important to avoid correcting a child and instead asking her questions that will enable her to uncover the mistake by herself, which in turn allows her to own the math. Do you agree? 48 down and then over is 50? Mm -hmm. Show me on the 100 chart one more time. 48 down one. These students figure out that 48 down arrow, right arrow, actually means 48 plus 11, not 48 plus 2. And most importantly, they figure it out together, which is much more powerful than being told by the teacher. Four Strikes and You're Out is a competitive game by Marilyn Burns. I'm sure you've played Hangman before. This game is a mathematical version of the word game Hangman. The objective of the game is for students to determine what digits will go in the blank to make the equation true. Students have four chances, strikes, to guess the number. The problem seen here is blank plus 22 equals blank. Let's say a student has just guessed five. How can we create student discourse to build number sense for this problem? We can ask the student, could a five be placed in the tens ones place of the first add end? Why or why not? Does it make sense if we put five in the beginning of this equation? It is important to have students turn and talk with their partner rather than simply filling in the blanks as the students offer number guesses. Okay, who wants to guess a digit? Yes. Four. Four. Let me look. Oh. What can you tell me right now before you even guess? This is worth how much, everybody? Forty. Forty. So what are these two tens going to have to be? Something that equals what? Oh, right? Who wants to guess? Yes, sir, for sitting quietly. Thank you so much. Number talks should be done as a number sense routine at least three times a week for five to 15 minutes each.